come out of my way. I know what you came here to do. Now press it open, let me see you get loose. It's going down for real. It's going down for real. It is going down for real, and once again, I am your host, Coach Walters, coming to you live in action on The Score, getting ready to get to know uh, another great athlete on our campus, definitely one of the characters. Uh, he always knows how to put a smile on everyone's face um, and uh, definitely knows exactly what to do in crunch time. Uh, he's got ice water in his veins, um, and I think part of that just has to go with his happy-go-lucky nature. Uh, so without further ado, let's get it on over to the man, the myth, the legend himself, Logan Shepard. Hey, Logan, how you doing? I'm doing good, Coach. How about yourself? Uh, I'm surviving, man. I'm surviving. I never thought I'd have to be a kindergarten teacher, a second grade teacher, and a high school teacher all at the same time. But um, but it's great talking with you guys every single day. So it's, it's something to wake up for, man. So um, what are you doing to survive this quarantine right now? Um, I've been golfing a lot. That's one okay. thing. I've been I've been trying to get golf courses just open again. Um, I've been rehabbing my ankle. That's been the that's been the challenge lately. But uh, yeah, just keep staying busy, trying to just do whatever, not to be bored. That's awesome, man. And um, just in kind of talking with you earlier, um, you and your buddies have kind of struck up a a little bit of a, an agreement. You were saying. Yeah, we uh we decided all this was about uh. When quarantine started, we all decided we're going to quarantine with our, each other. So we stayed at our houses for about two, three weeks. Just we stayed at home. And now, now we're all hanging out together and we just stay and hang out with our little group. Oh, that's, that's awesome, man. Um, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, for those people that are tuning in for the first time, we're trying to get to know everybody um, and kind of their stories. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your athletic story here at Del Oro? Um, well, I transferred to Laura into my freshman year, uh, started playing football. I played receiver and somewhat of DB, didn't really play that much, but, uh, started that. And then I, eighth grade, I was really, when I started kicking and that, that was my first year of football. I fell, I fell in love with kicking. I think I thought it was fun. It was, it was, came natural to me. So I started kicking, uh, baseball wise. I just, I mean, I've always loved the game. My dad played it. My brother plays it. My uncles played it. It's just in the family. So, yeah, I just – I've always loved playing sports and just kept it through high school. That's awesome, man. No, I mean, as as a as an alumni who was a two-sport athlete in football and baseball, I, I definitely have a special place in my heart for you guys that, that do both of them. Um, and obviously you've, you've had a very successful career in both. Uh, cut short a little this spring because I know you were looking forward to pitching your senior year. Um, but you guys have definitely accomplished a lot. Talk about baseball right now and some of the cool things Coach French has you guys doing um, to kind of stay connected. Oh, he's done, he, he's done an unbelievable job. Like, I, I was, I've been very impressed. Like, I mean, I'm always getting the text like, hey, we have, uh, these, we have these daily checkups. So you write down what are you going to do today to be productive or be successful. And then we also have been doing uh, virtual workouts. So he does uh, – he has, he has a trainer that goes on Zoom, and we do our uh, workouts. And he's just been real, like, it, it, he's done a really good job keeping everybody intact and focused. He's like, like it, it, the first goal was to make sure that if season starts again, we're ready to go. And I mean, now we know season's over, but still, he's just keeping us straight on a straight path and love him for that. That's awesome, man. That's so, so cool. Um, you know, uh, Talking about your your careers in both football and baseball, which one was your favorite? That's a tough one. I mean, there, there's certain things about each sport that I, I love the most. I, you know, favorite sport probably for me has always been baseball. I've just always, since I was little, loved it. But uh, football really grew on me. Like, I think I, I, I mean, I'm just playing, I'm going to keep going with it and go as far as I can. So I thought, I have to go with baseball, but I love both. No doubt, no doubt. We actually have a clip, and, and unfortunately, it's a little pixelated as we tried to enlarge yeah. it um, to the screen. Uh, but why don't you go ahead and tell us what we're about to watch. 
All right, so this was the first game junior season, and it was against Del Campo. We played Del Campo in the section the year before, so it was a really big game. Uh, we were up. I remember the any before that was scary. It was one out, bases loaded. I came in, struck out two guys, so I was already on a high. And then this is uh, two outs, I believe runner at third, one run lead, and uh, this happened. And it just it, it was it was it was such a good way to start off my varsity career. That's awesome. Well, baseball. well, let's check it out. Yeah, I, I remember that so vividly. I remember, oh. And that voice in the background sounds awfully familiar. It seems to be in all of the clips, uh, very excitable. Um, who's that voice belong to? That'd be my mother. Yeah, no, she is. She's a very, very supportive mom and fan of, of uh, all of Del Oro sports and everything Del Oro. Um, so, I mean, I think uh, now would be a great time to talk about it. Um, is there anybody that you would want to give a special shout out as far as your athletic career, a special thank oh, you? Definitely my parents. My parents, I mean, since I was little, like going to practices and just and my dad coached me in baseball since I was, as boy, probably when I was about 10, he started coaching me. He's just been like, whenever I had a question, he's always there to answer. And then my mom, when my dad was ever working, she would play catch with me or she would do whatever she could to drive me to practice. They, they've done everything they can for me. They've, they put a lot of effort for me. That's awesome, man. And, and it's cool to hear you recognize them for sure. Um, what is your uh, favorite sport to watch? Oh, you know, it's weird. I would say basketball. Okay. Which is, okay. which I, I've always, um, I played basketball till eighth grade. And then I realized that height's sort of a factor in basketball. And I <laughs> sort of wanted to break in between uh, football and baseball. So I decided not to play in high school. But uh, I just love watching. I think basketball, besides the last uh, one minute of the game, when it's just a bunch of timeouts and fouls, I don't like watching that. But the rest of the game, I love watching. No doubt. We, we sound very similar. I, I had a, quite the prestigious basketball career at Placer Elementary School until eighth grade and got to high school and realized I'd have to learn how to dribble after being a power forward my entire life and decided to just focus on football and baseball after that. Um, yeah, I told him. Uh, who's your favorite professional teams? Um, I'm more of a, I'm more of a pr player guy. I'm not a big okay. team guy. Um, I would have to go uh, baseball-wise. I'd say the Rockies. Okay. Only because uh, my dad was associated with them when they first started out, so that was that's the only reason why I'm with Rockies. Um, football-wise, if I'm rooting for a team, it'll probably be like the local team. So I'll go. You know, if Niners are playing, I'll root for the Niners. Yeah. You know. Solid. Okay. Yeah. Um, who are your sports heroes? <sighs> sports heroes. You know, I'm a big uh, – I don't know why, but my favorite pitcher hero-wise is uh, R.A. Dickey. Oh, yeah. I love, I love the knuckleball. Yes. So, so check this out. So, I'm a huge Seattle Mariners fan. I've been miserable my entire baseball life because other than 95 and 2001, I've never had anything to be excited about for Mariners baseball, right? So yeah. R.A. Dickey started out, um, I can't recall if he was Rangers first or Mariners first, then Rangers or something. But then, like, he used to be a guy that drove me nuts because he was this power pitcher, and he just threw it as hard as he could, and he gets shelled all over the place. Then he ends up with the Mets, right? And he's throwing this knuckleball yeah. that's unhittable. And I'm just it's like, insane. this – this is exactly what would happen to the Mariners is a guy's with us. He can't get anybody out. He goes somewhere else and he becomes an all-star. It just is what it is. So that's awesome, yeah. man. I love yeah, it. R.A. Dickey. I Fantastic. Love the documentary on him is unbelievable. The knuckleball documentary yes. on Netflix. Yes. It's so good. Fastball, I didn't like fastball as much as I liked um, no, the other Knuckleball one. was better. Knuckleball was way better. Um, yeah. Tim Wakefield, too. Oh, he had an unhittable. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Red Sox, right? Yeah, exactly. That was yeah. almost before your time. You guys yeah. make me feel old whenever I talk with you guys about sports. Um, uh, just kind of scrolling down the list. Um, if you could replay one game, which one would it be? 
if like I wanted to like go back and win that game, win the or game, like, or if you just wanted to, um, or if you just wanted to relive a particular moment that that really spoke out to you. Yeah, I would really say that one, the one video, the first game of the season, that 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 was just, I remember, I was that was just like all time high, just like it, it was like what varsity sports like was like made out to be like I just love it was big situation big play winning the game it was just the, it was such a happy moment at the yeah. time well and speaking of moments man I mean I don't know if you consciously did it or subconsciously did it but people would always ask me when I was a kid why I wanted to play quarterback because you know all the focus is on you and you get too much um too much uh credit when you win and all the blame when you lose well, that being said, I don't know if you could pick two more pressure-packed positions and just unthankful positions in all of sports because being the kicker is probably the most pressure-packed job in all of sports because if you are successful at it, well, you should be successful at it. And if you screw up, everybody notices and everybody's all on top of you. Talk about talk about what that's like, man. I mean, for me, I, I I don't really know. I never I've never been a big pressure guy. I mean, I think I think it started at an early age in baseball. My as as a my dad being the coach, he would like to mess with me. And if it was bases loaded with two outs, he would throw me in the game and say, "You better get this guy out." And uh, I think since I, I just I really don't think about it too much. I guess I just I, it's a, it's a major trust thing though. Like I, you have to trust the snapper, you have to trust the holder. And I did like, I, I remember, I remember, I remember Kyle got hurt during the Folsom game and it was like, crap. Like I, I, I overthought it. I, I thought too much and the kick got blocked because I was just thinking too much. But then I think it's a big trust thing. I, I think it's more trust than um, pressure for me. I think there is some cases where you, you feel your heart beat a little more and you're like, I need to get this kick. But besides that, it's just, you have to go back to basics and pra- it's just practice. That's awesome. I mean, that's that's a, a brilliant answer because um, that's exactly right. It is a team game, and, and you can feel like you're on an absolute island out there. But um, but I have to say that you did quite well. You um, arguably one of the most accurate kickers in Del Oro history, um, and you you did a great job in, in some real pressure pack situations. Um, but like you said, it, it definitely is a team effort. But um, I know that there's there's an awful lot of people that wouldn't have the stones to go out there and do what you did, man. Speaking of that, we have a couple other clips, um, a couple pressure pack ticks. Unfortunately, um, they didn't come in a winning effort, um, but still uh, some super, super important kicks. Um, the first one, uh, we're going to go ahead and play it on this side. Um, I believe it was third quarter against Whitney High School. Yeah, this is a this is a pressure one. This one. It's a little pixelated. Yeah. That was that was a big one though. I, I remember that one. I do yeah. remember that one pretty well. Probably um probably even more pressure packed. Um this was in overtime as we had our first possession stall out. And this is not an easy kick. If I remember correctly, it was like a 35 or 36 yarder. I think it was 40. 40 some I thought it was, or maybe it was under maybe it was just like 37 I want to say it might have been 37 like yeah it's it's oh, it was definitely a kick that not many high school kids can make um and especially with the pressure of having to kick in overtime um where um any score uh, might be the determining factor so um again pretty awesome kick And what a moment that was. I mean, it, it, it'll always stay with me, um, especially you running off the field and how excited we were. And, um, you know, like I said, only wish that it could have came in a winning effort, uh, but all the same, pretty darn cool. Now, yeah. one of the interesting things that you kind of mentioned as far as uh, coaching and kicking and all that stuff, um, problem is with kicking is it is considered one third of the game, but when you actually – tally up the statistical data you're not on the field a whole lot nope and and as far as coaching is concerned um we had kicking coaches along the way and special teams coordinators 
But you didn't have a coach that was directly responsible for you during practice time. So you probably found yourself with a lot of downtime, didn't you, Logan? I, I had a lot of downtime, yes. Uh, and what did you do with that downtime? Well, uh, golf. I, I went golfing every Wednesday. Okay. That was my okay. thing. I went golfing. I, lo I love golf. But uh, So hold on. So your teammates, they're, they're putting in arguably the most important practice. You took care of your practice in the morning. So what do what a, what a special teams guys do? They head out and they, they go get a little golf in is what you're saying. Yeah, pretty much. That's, I mean, I think me and Whaley, me and Whaley also started, we'd go every, we, we try to go every Wednesday and I, I feel like it's just a fun thing to go do. We got, I mean, yeah, there's that, you can't really kick too much during the week or you're going to have a burnt leg for the game. So. Right. Right. It'd be like, it would be like pitching every day before you actually pitched a game. Totally. Right. So, I mean, that, that being said, one of the skills you really learned how to do was keep yourself entertained on the sidelines when it was your turn. And that's what I loved about this first video clip that we're going to share. Um, this is unbeknownst to me. I had no idea that this was going on because obviously I was very, very into the game. Apparently you and one of the trainers decided to hold some hands during the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there it is. We did the, we just started doing the wave during the game. We did it. I think we did it almost every game. It was uh, me and Macy Roth. We just, because, uh, <laughs> I mean, because I, I would always be on the end of the field. I would never really be in the middle because I'm like, I mean, I, I don't really need to be anywhere close. I just, I just stayed towards the end. And uh, yeah, so I, I saw Macy and we just started, we did it one game and then it just caught, kept on going. And yeah. So a two person wave, huh? Yeah. We, I didn't even know that was videotaped at the time. I, I think my mom just must have saw me out down there and uh, videotaped it. But I, I, she, she showed me after the game, and I was like, oh, I didn't even know you guys saw that. Like, that's sort of just. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, it's like I always said, you know, when you think nobody's watching, that's when everybody's watching. Um, but I can yeah. tell you this. Your athleticism um, is definitely top notch, and you can tell um, by this next clip here. Um, I think that this was uh, TikTok famous, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was semi. Yeah, semi. But this is uh, you just kind of messing around on the field. Yeah. So I would have broken my ankle if I even attempted something like that. Yeah, I have to give uh, credit to Ryan Whaley. He taught me that trick, the spinning ball trick. I remember he's, I saw him do it like my freshman year. And I was like, how'd you do that? He taught me, and like a day later, I was doing it. And it's, I, I love that trick. It's probably my favorite. Well, as you said, you're, you're also doing a lot of golfing right now. This looks like a little top golf action right here. Oh, yeah. Uh, swing I love looks, top golf. Yeah. Swing looks good, man. Let's take a look. That looks like it went yeah. about 500 feet or 500 yards. That that one, that one was a solid one. That one, that one, it felt good. Well, right on, man. Well, let's get to know a little bit about Logan um, on the personal level. Um, what's your birthday? Uh, my birthday is May twenty second, two thousand one. Oh, so we got a birthday coming up, huh? We do. That's outstanding. Yeah. Uh, are you are you hoping somehow that quarantine is lifted so that you don't have to do a drive by birthday party? Um. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it definitely won't be lifted by then. But uh, I mean, I'll be with my group of buddies that I've been hanging with, which is a good thing. Awesome, awesome. Uh, get out of. <laughs> Looks like we, we're having some in. some uh, Zoom bombs going on as well. So yeah, they're trying to hop in. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely, hey, everybody wants to be on the score. Um, of course. Uh, what is your uh, what restaurant are you going to the moment that it's lifted? Oh. Um, you know, I've been really staying active, going out to eat still, but, uh, um, I can't even think right now. Probably, you know, I'll probably go to like Taylor's. I think I've okay. been to Taylor's in a while, yeah. but, uh, I've been hitting out in and out a lot, drive through. I see, uh, I see fellow teammate Dom Wong in there all the time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, me and Dom, I, I videotape Dom every single time I go. Cause I think it's so funny that I always see him there, but, um. Yeah, in and out, I say quite active at. 
but yeah. That's awesome, man. Hey, um, what is your go-to dance move? Try the, the Carlton. Okay. That's Love outstanding. the Carlton. That's outstanding. Um, how many siblings do you have? I have uh, two siblings. I have an older sister, Taylor. She's, uh, she attends Azusa Pacific University. And I have a younger brother. Uh, and he's going to next year be a junior at Del Oro. Right on. Right on. Um, and what is your go-to snack during quarantine? You know, I'm, I'm going to go with a dessert on this one. I'm going to go with pizookies. I've been making a lot of pizookies lately. Okay. My, my, my mom makes a cookie dough, and I just put it in the little pizuki can and throw some ice cream on there and call it a day. That's awesome, man. Well, um, I kind of uh, let it loose, but what's our plan for next year? Uh, I'll be going to Sierra to play baseball and football. Awesome, man. So um, get a chance to, to stay local and hopefully uh, uh, gain a little path afterwards. I know that this season was probably going to be a big season as far as uh, recruiting for baseball. So um, I, think, uh, I think that's a very positive outlook and a way to take advantage of um, two really, really good programs around here. And, you know, best part is you get to, you know, stay at home and, and mom can still take care of your laundry, right? Of course, of course, you gotta love that. No, no doubt, no doubt. Um, so, lastly, um, we're gonna get into a uh, couple pop culture questions here. Um, probably uh, most important, or one of the things I've been asking a lot of people is, if you could have tickets to any event, where are you going? Luke Combs concert. Really? Okay. What is your I favorite love- Luke Combs? Oh, I, I mean, I, I probably, I think I have about 20 of his songs on my phone um I, I, there's one album his one album i forget what it's called but uh like uh beer never broke my heart uh better together six feet six feet apart which is actually about quarantine i think that one's pretty funny right um, uh what you see is what you get when it rains pour. like oh i i love his voice i love his uh songwriting i just think he's a really good artist that's awesome man that's great well um you just kind of answered uh, that second one. This is the one that I've been waiting for um, as far as, as trying to figure out. Um, uh, I've been asking everybody, but I already know the answer. Uh, TikTok or the gram? I'm a TikTok guy, I guess. You, you are a TikTok guy. And for those of you who aren't following Logan on TikTok, uh, let's make sure that we give him some love. Make sure that we follow at Logan Shepherd 9 um, cause he stays, he stays legit. Um, your brother has a pretty active, uh, TikTok, uh, as well, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm not, I, I support him and all, but, uh, I don't, our content's a little different. Uh, okay. he, he likes, uh, his, his whole TikTok is trying to get girls. Mine's just having fun, but, uh, I, yeah, no, he, he, it's a uh, dizzy Shep. He likes to go by dizzy now, no but, doubt. Uh, yeah, I know he's, uh, he's also going to start a, I might as well shout him out. He's going to start a YouTube channel pretty soon. So, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, yeah. I think he saw – because I started – I've been really bored in quarantine, so I started a YouTube channel too. And uh, okay. he saw me editing. He saw me editing, so he, he brought out his camera, started filming, and he's now editing too. So. Well, well, give yourself a little plug. You've got the audience. I mean, hopefully you're, you're going to be excited about this interview and maybe share it. What's the plug? What's your YouTube channel? Um, just search Logan Shepard's vlogs. It should show up. It's right there. I have about four or five uh, fifth videos coming out today. But, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Um, uh, what is your favorite Disney song? You know, I'm not a huge Disney person, so I don't really know that many. But uh, I have to go with uh, You're Welcome, The Rock. I love Love the rock, so I'm gonna just go with that one. I like Moana. it. It matches your personality. I feel like after a couple kicks this season, you know, you came over and I, I was like, "Good job." I feel like you just wanted to just say, "You're welcome." Like, nailed it. Um, never, never. never. <laughs> uh, if you could trade lives with a celebrity for one day, who would it be? You know, I would say like. Uh, David Dobrik, he's a he's a vlogger, he's a YouTube guy, and I I I watch his videos, and I, he just I don't know, I love his 
uh, videos and he just has a really, he's a really solid group of friends that he hangs out with and I just want to be in that group so much. So, yeah. Nice. Hey, uh, who is your favorite teacher at Delora? Oh man. You know, I'm gonna give my boy, uh, young powers a shout out. There you go. That's my guy. I love, uh, little powers, little pal. He's, I had him uh, twice for math and he was, he was always coming with the Ra the Raiders trivia and lollipops, so I loved it. Nice. Hey, what show are you binge watching right now? Oh, I actually just started one, uh, Parks and Rec. Yes. Have you ever seen it before? No, I just started uh, two days ago. Okay, I have watched it eight times. I'm, and when I say watched it eight times, I mean the entire season eight times. Yeah, or it's, the it's entire funny. series I, I, eight times. It's really funny. I, I have loved it so far, so I just keep watching it. That's awesome, man. Um, well, uh, that's going to get us into our next part, which is sports trivia. So Logan hasn't seen any of these questions before. So, uh, Logan, you a little nervous? A little bit. I, I, I feel like I'm pretty strong trivia-wise, but – I don't know. Hopefully I don't embarrass myself on these. All right. Well, let's get it started. Here we go, Logan. First question. Trivia one. What is the longest field goal in Del Oro football history? I believe it's Ryan Whaley's kick. Uh, I think it was 52 yards. He's off to a hot start up and over for one for one. Ryan Whaley, 52 yards against Lincoln High School. Question number two, in professional basketball, how long is the court? Oh, man. I'm a basketball guy. About that. I'm going to guess like 110 feet. That's a great Fair. guess. It's actually 94 feet. Okay. Which Major League Baseball team has the second most World Series titles? Well, I know the Yankees have the most. It can't be the Red Sox. The Red Sox only have won last couple of years. They've had a long – oh, man. Yeah, 1906 – or 1918, sorry. Yeah, I'm going to – I'm going to go with the Dodgers. Dodgers. Just because they've been around so long. Great guess. Let's see what the correct answer is. It's actually the St. Louis oh, Cardinals. Okay, another old team. They've been around a while. Okay. Yeah, they actually have 11. But that just shows you the disparity. The Yankees have 27, and the next closest yeah. team has 11. Yeah, if you, if you, if you said the most, I, everybody knows the Yankees. The Yankees sure. just they, – they, they know how to win. Right. They got the hey, money. Hey, and, and believe it or not, the Boston Red Sox have the third most championships. Do they really? Oh, really? This is probably like the earlier, earlier area. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Before they, they traded little, Babe Ruth, the curse. Yes, absolutely. All right, moving on. Who holds the record for most points scored in NBA history for a career? Is that, is that Will Chamberlain? Say what? Uh, Will Chamber. Will right? Chamberlain, that's a great guess. It's yeah. actually Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Oh, okay. 38,387 points. Amazingly, he never gets mentioned as the greatest basketball player of all time, but in a sport where the goal is to score as much as you can, he has the record. So, is what it is. Uh, continuing on, what is the longest field goal in NFL history? 63 yards? It's actually 64. It was just broken by Matt Prater. Oh, but great okay. guess. If 63 yards was held for a long time. Um, and, again, kicking in mile high. I mean, let's let's go here. Oh, yeah, altitude. Yeah. It's, it's, it's air-resisted or air-assisted. <laughs> yeah. uh, what is the earliest a kicker has ever been drafted in NFL history? Okay, there's I. Okay, if it's the new guy, it was the guy from Florida State, a, a Guagu, or I'm get, going with like Ray Guy, as the yeah. other one. I, I think I'm impressed by your by your kicker knowledge here because 
Aguayo was drafted, I want to say, in the second round, and that was yeah. three years ago. Um, yeah. Ray Guy, I'm not even familiar with how early he was drafted, but that was back in the day where there were like 20 rounds. Um, so he may have been a late addition. But actually, the earliest that a kicker has ever been drafted was 17th overall yeah, in the first like... round by the Oakland Raiders. And I argue right with my – I argue with my Raider buddies all the time. I'm like, who drafts a kicker in the first round? But yeah. the guy was pretty that, good. That would have been a good guess. I, I, was, I don't know why I thought uh, – Jenny Kowski was probably if – I, if I had, like, a couple guesses, that was probably going to pop up because he's been – is he so – I think he's – I think he retired, but he's been around. Uh, he yeah, around he, I think – I want to say he just retired, uh, like, two or three years ago. Yeah, I think so. Right on. All right, number seven. The movie Cool Runnings is about what Olympic sport? It'd be bobsledding, Team Jamaica. Yeah, 1988, Team Jamaica. Good call. Number eight, how many periods are there in ice hockey? Uh, I believe that's three periods. It is three periods. Hey, you're back on track. There we Number go. Number nine. What is the only major sport that does not have predetermined field dimensions? I'm going to go with baseball, Matt. You are correct. The outfield does not have predetermined yeah. dimensions. So actually, each field is determined by the home team. Other than bases um, and pitching mound, uh, those are the only requirements for a baseball field. And last question. A captain of the girls' wrestling team, this lady recorded a 20 and 9 record for the 2020 Lady Golden Eagles. I'm going to have to go with uh, Mariah Cortez. It is Mariah Cortez. And uh, speaking of Mariah, I believe that it's time for nominating. Uh, yeah, the next nomination is going to be Mariah Cortez. All right, Mariah, you are next up on lucky episode number 13 of The Score. Um, so we'll be welcoming Mariah in uh, next time. Hey, Logan, I just want to say thank you so much for being on and being a part of this. It was great talking with you, man. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Coach. Awesome, man. Well, once again, folks, thank you for joining us for episode number 12 of The Score. Uh, we're just hoping to keep getting better and better, just like all of you. Uh, let's stay 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 smart, uh, protect each other out there, um, take care of one another. Uh, don't forget, as always, pride matters, and don't forget to check the score. <laughs>